I am not interested in convincing people that astrology is real. You know, jazz 10 years ago would have been like, yeah, let me explain it to you. You're going to get it. But it's just a waste of time because those people are committed to misunderstanding you. To put it simply, they have so much bias. Astrology can be such an activating word for some people. I've been so disrespected by people, especially men who will look at me and like, like I'm, you know, not human because I believe these things. Welcome to the Coast Podcast. I'm Emily, a virtual assistant agency owner who left Amazon in 2019 to build my dream. And I'm Whitney, a freelance writer and communications consultant who never felt at home in a cube farm. We wanted to learn from people who paved their own ways like we did. So we created this podcast to talk to others who are brave enough to pick a different path. Creatives, entrepreneurs, people doing their careers and their lives their way. Join us as we make new friends, get inspired, and show you beautiful paths less travel. Not every road leads to the coast, but the ones that do come with a great view. And welcome back to the coast. <laughs> My name is Emily Given, and I own a virtual assistant agency called She's the Given. And we help business owners claim more time back by taking the administrative tasks off their plate so they can focus more on things that matter. Look at you. I'm Whitney Popa. I own a communications consultancy slash growing agency focused on helping you tell your story, getting your voice into the world. And today we are excited because we have such an aligned guest for both of us in that sense to welcome Jasmine Rambeau, who is an astrologer, yoga teacher, and speech therapist who specializes in authentic communication skills and intuitive embodiment practices. Her goal is to make astrology accessible and empowering through all of her offerings from individual readings to workshops and retreats and now coaching and probably a podcast, Jazz focuses on the theme of connection, connection to spirit, connection to community and connection to yourself. Welcome, Jazz. Thank you for being here. Oh, hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So like short story, I pestered Jazz to do this and she ignored me a couple times until she didn't. And I like, then I kept offering her ways to like be in my orbit. <laughs> and I was like, have a free event at Workhorse. This episode sponsored by Workhorse. And then she started engaging my offers <laughs> because I was pestery enough. And as Emily would say, the fortunes in the follow-up. So that is how Jasmine mm -hmm. got here is through consistent and constant pestering lovingly. Well, I love that, Whitney. And I was thinking about, yeah, our, our origin story and how, as a matter of fact, I have been just such a fangirl of you. So I think maybe I was just a little bit nervous, a little bit like, you know, I knew it was aligned and it felt good to start working together. I love that you framed it that way to gas me up and I appreciate it. I receive. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know I'm talking to a Leo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So that's what we have always been super fascinated about by you and the the worlds that you have that collide. So you're a speech therapist, a speech pathologist, yes. which I'm butchering. So you'll have to help us dig into that. And then you're also an astrologer. And for the record, I met you at an event where you were doing mini readings, like a year, I was going to ask ago. you where you met her. Yeah. And then I like, I didn't know I was, and I'm glad that I was opted in to your email list. And like, I, not everyone writes a good newsletter, you know? So I was even telling Jazz before we started recording that, like, I just took some time this morning and really like, I don't always have the time to read everybody's newsletter. So I leave them unread until I can. But then if too much time elapses, then it's weird anyway. So I was just sitting here reading Jazz's awesome newsletter, just being like, oh my God, Jazz. And I'm talking to her today and I didn't know I was signing up for this. And I'm so glad I was. Yay. Oh, <laughs> I, I always love getting your feedback on the newsletters, Whitney. I'm just, yeah, I love writing them. It's such a joy to share. And yeah. When you have a little process, like you have a ritual, don't you? I do. Yes. I will light a candle. I'll burn some Palo Santo. I'll 
you know, meditate beforehand. It's really such a spiritual practice for me. And I also just love metaphor. So I'll like find either like a random piece of pop culture or, you know, a quote or a podcast or something that has spoken to me over the last couple of weeks. And then I'll tie that in with either the full moon or the new moon. Yeah. I love that. And we're in a juicy I love that too. Right maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe that's like what my blocker is like. It's because writing is a big deal for me and I don't do it. She said, so I know it's very special. So maybe like ritual would be helpful. That's yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I definitely recommend it because so often, you know, we go to those practices that we know we need to do and we're just kind of in our head. And so that's also why I love tying in embodiment practices to everything I do too, because it brings you into your heart, your energy, your presence, and then you can really show up in the way that you want. It can be such a short ritual too. I had one of our former guests, Kim, she's an Akashic Records reader. I signed up for her three-month membership and we had our first long reading last week and she was coaching me basically to do more ritual stuff to just connect throughout the day. And she said that could even just be a breath as long as you're intentional about it and make it because I think we can get too far down of like, I have to have a ritual for this and it has to be this whole thing and full of witchery and all this stuff that we then tell ourselves we don't have time for. And then we go into the shame spiral, like knowing that it can just be a breath or like you said, putting your hand to your heart yes. can really just change everything and give you permission to be like, this is my ritual for this and yeah. go from there. Yes, definitely. I love that. And, you know, I like to say that I'm a mystic who likes to demystify because, you know, so often that is the blocker. Like people say, oh, I can't meditate because I don't have a meditation cushion or I don't, you know, I don't have this perfect altar. Like I think Instagram has really ruined a lot of it for us because we think it needs to look a certain way. But I think the easier you can make it, the more intuitive it will feel and the more sustainable it will be too. So I love helping people find ways that, you know, it can really come alive and make sense for them. For sure. So going back to you and what you do and your worlds and how they collide, can you walk us through all of it? Like the speech part, the astrology part, when one came and the other one did and how you have so many events going on. We just want to know, like, what is a day, week, month in the life of jazz? Awesome. Yes. Okay. So I'll take it back to actually when I first found astrology, because astrology came before my career as a speech language pathologist. So my mom was actually really into astrology. So I grew up with it in a lot of ways, but I didn't really connect with it until I had my first reading when I was 18. And I was just such a painfully shy kid. Like, just very quiet, very like communication was very hard for me. And it was that first astrology reading where my astrologer, my mom's astrologer, shout out to Jerry Traxler in Royal Oak, Michigan, told me, it's okay. It's actually amazing that you are the way that you are. I'm also a Scorpio rising. Emily told me before we started that she's a Scorpio rising and I'm a Scorpio rising and Scorpio Mercury. So it just felt always so hard to open myself up and be vulnerable and sharing my voice. So it felt like just almost like a pressure release, like a valve was released. And I was finally able to connect with myself and, you know, increase my confidence in the way that I moved through the world. But then, so I just kept learning astrology, never thought I would become an astrologer or do this professionally, but I was just fascinated and wanted to see everybody's birth charts and you know, to, to a fault. I I've come a long way since then, but through the course of that, I also found the world of speech therapy and I didn't even really put it together that it was so meaningful to me because communication was hard for me. It was really because I loved kids and I loved helping people. And I loved, you know, the medical field and making a difference. And so I pursued that field, but then once I was like in grad school and really like learning the ins and outs of how to communicate, how to improve your voice and your communication, I was like, oh, like, of course, you know, spirit led me to this world because it was something that I could have needed, you know, or I could have used something I needed. 
so now I am still a speech language pathologist. I work with kids, adults, people that have a hard time communicating and, you know, giving them tools and strategies and ways to practice and improve their voice. So I've been doing that for over five years now. But along the way, I also started my astrology business because it just got to the point where I was doing readings for so many people and was like, I just need to start charging for this. So I started my business, Astrology Speaks, um, and, you know, it's grown so much since then. So I've really decreased my speech therapy work, even though I still work a few days a week doing that. And now I spend my time as an astrologer offering individual readings, readings for corporate teams, helping teams improve their communication and their interpersonal dynamics. I also yeah, starting coaching. So, you know, being able to work with people in longer containers and really just offering ways for community to connect. I think that's something that I've always longed for is a community of people who are both spiritual and in the world and aware of what's going on in the world and connected to, you know, their own purpose. So, like, yes, and people are, are my people, people that are not so one way that it's like they're just totally denying a certain part, right? I love people that can really see all sides. So yeah, that's what I'm up to. And it feels really good to be able to offer both of those things. So cool. I want... She's got to meet Kim. I think they'll get along really well. Yes. Yes, and... And I want to, what I heard that like put the little pings off in my brain that I want you two to dig in together is the Scorpio stuff, because I heard a lot of yeah. what I hear from Emily consistently that might not, she might not be giving herself permission to be her Scorpio self. So can you tell us a little bit more about the Scorpio is it the Scorpio rising part yeah. of you that you said wouldn't allow you to use your voice? And yeah. now maybe somebody listening to this might think I might be a Scorpio rising. They might not know their whole chart and they might feel certain resistances to using their voice and what that might look like on a chart. Yes. Thank you for yeah bringing that up. And the, the cool thing about astrology is that we actually have all the signs within us. If you look at a birth chart, which is the picture of the sky, the moment you're born, you see this whole wheel, the whole sky and all 12 zodiac signs. So even if you feel like, or you think, oh, I don't have any Scorpio in my chart, you do. It just depends on where. And so the rising sign is the nine o'clock point in every birth chart. And that really sets up the whole architecture of the chart. It really sets up the whole purpose of the chart and really what it all comes back to. So for a Libra rising, for instance, Whitney, you know, you are so focused on relationships. This is an air sign that really its gift is using its voice. Its gift is, you know, seeing other people and building people up and wanting to develop those relationships. So your whole purpose is around harmony and spreading beauty and communication in the world. To have Scorpio on your rising or another word for it is your ascendant. This is a water sign that is the deepest, darkest water sign that we have. So to have that as your rising means that your whole purpose is about coming back to the truth, searching for the truth, digging deeper, asking questions, observing, right? So people that are a Scorpio rising will move through the world with such a intensity where they're not necessarily going to be speaking freely about anything. They can speak very powerfully once they have something that they can share and that they know deeply about. So that's the way that I think about my own Scorpio rising is that early in life, I was just searching for something that was true enough, you know, like, and the pe the things people were talking about, I just couldn't relate to it. It didn't go deep enough for me. And so I just held my voice in. And so, yeah, that Scorpio energy can really protect itself. It can really hold its energy so close to home. 
And it's quite mysterious in that way. And people don't often know what's going on for a Scorpio or anyone, you know, these placements because it is so private. But once you can really identify what it is that means the most to you and know it at such a deep soul level, then it's like a waterfall. Then it's like, oh, I can share about this all day, you know? So even now, like I, I can talk about astrology, yoga, embodiment all day long. And that's part of the reason I want to start a podcast is because I have all these things I want to share about, but put me in a, a room where people are talking about, you know, like sports or like whatever. And I will, my, my throat will like close up and it's really hard for me to just like say a random thing about it. Right. That all makes sense to me because I, like, I have this knowing about myself that like, I'm going to be a speaker and author and big, giant, influential person one day. I know that I I cannot see the path right now. And like, that's weird because I, that's not me at this current moment, but I just know that with every bone in my body, like I'm meant to do that. And I feel like I've had all these experiences and they're all coming into like this big thing that I'm going to talk about. And it it's definitely brewing. It's been brewing. So I'm yes. waiting for the valve. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think for you, you know, being a Scorpio rising as well as a cancer sun, you are so ruled by emotion, right? It needs to feel right. And so I think for people that have a lot of water energy in their chart, which the water signs are Scorpio, Cancer, and Pisces. It's so important for you to be connected to what's going on internally and the emotions that you're experiencing. And when you can be really honest about that, then the clarity comes and then intuitive hits come and you can really find that path. And as a non-astrologer, what I'm hearing too, sorry to interrupt you, Emily, is that maybe it's that depth of knowing yourself because the things that you need to speak on you have to really dig deep and you're in that process now and once you feel really embodied in the things that you have to share then it'll be the waterfall that's kind of what I was gleaning yeah it makes sense yeah yeah and so I think you know as we start talking about astrology and the the elements of fire, air, earth, and water, and what it means to connect with your birth chart and the energies that you have, it can be really, it can get petty really fast, right? Like you're like, oh, score, I don't know what that means. Like, what does it mean? And so I think immediately we need to start bringing in the embodiment piece. And that's what I love to do is guide people in visualization you know, over the last year I've been, year or two, I've been developing my unique style and how I lead visualization to help you really feel it and in your body, right? Because then you're like, oh, if I can picture what it would feel like to flow down a river, that fixed water, then I can start to, you know, feel the energy of Scorpio and I can really embody it with more presence. I can speak to too. So a few things with regard to the visualization part is I, as I mentioned earlier, pestered Jazz to do all these things. So I pestered her to have an event at Workhorse and we had a small women's circle that was really, really beautiful. And it was the night that I announced my book and I'm feeling all kind of jittery again, like just that feeling of I had to be so vulnerable and I didn't know that I would have such a mix of feelings that I did. And as part of her circle, there was visualization that I didn't realize was going back to each sign and different parts of nature and, and certain ones because of who you are, where you are in the world and your chart right now would resonate more. And so like on a mountain in a, in a wildflower field, we were just on this journey through a river and And it was really incredible. So certain parts of the visualization would stick out to you more. And we investigated those and why and what signs they were attributed to. And then after that, we had this little fire ritual that we did and we carved into a candle and then visualized with that too. And I saw my dad who comes to me as an eagle in this like burning fire And the word that came to me was confidence and him just like winking to me as this eagle. And I felt so that was exactly what I needed that night in order to move forward in confidence, not to say that that 
confidence has been unwavering by any means. But when I get kind of impostery, I go back to my dad as the fire eagle telling me to be confident and just move through it again. And that's all because of jazz. And then it also goes back to as I'm thinking more about being back in my networking era and moving into an agency, like you mentioned, Jazz, like being in the real world too, how I define my networking is very much, I keep using you, like I talk about my fire eagle dad all the time. And then I also reference that same thing of, I want to be in these rooms because we know I'm a VIP type person with just a few women really not thinking of, I need to go to Seattle and go into the skyscraper and put on a name tag and have a networking event. It's really getting deep with those people in an atmosphere like that. It is for me technically networking if I'm meeting new people and defining it differently so that I'm not freaking out about, I have to go out into the world and this is what the world tells me to be. Astrology is another way of thinking, how can I be in the world in a way that makes sense for me. And then the meta layer of that for me is like, when I go to your events, I'm technically kind of networking, but it feels good to me. And it feels like I'm with my people versus somebody, you know, some mansplainer on Twitter telling me I have to write funnels and go be in big rooms I don't like. So those two things to say, the embodiment part of it and taking it from the conversation, which is something I've had multiple readings. I haven't understood half of what people have said. I totally understood what you said, not only of here was your chart when you were born and who you're meant to be, and also how that relates to the present moment and what's coming up for you, which I think is a really important aspect of what you do. And then also taking that and meeting other like-minded people who are also doing those things in the you know, Washington, Oregon area, which is pretty much what I've seen of you and how you're navigating the travel of your business. Definitely. Yeah. A a couple of things there. Like, I think you're really speaking to the power of container and the power of circle. And so I think as business owners, especially people that are in these more spiritual circles, we hear the word circle and we're like, what is that? And I think it's really important to demystify it, that it's really just coming together with intention right? Where, yeah, we're, we're sitting literally in a circle, but it's a space where everybody has equal time to share, to connect. And it's so beautiful that we are kind of redefining like networking and connection. And I really see myself as a facilitator of that. But once I get there, like, yes, I am guiding, but there is something that's beyond that kind of opens up once we create that container and it's everybody's energy together and everybody that's there is meant to be there. I never worry about how many people or who, like it really is so beyond, <laughs> which sounds kind of, yeah, out there, but but it's so powerful. And a lot of people that come to these events are business owners. So I do see networking at these circles and people are making connections and And it's in such a deeper way because you don't have to worry about getting your perfect pitch right, you know, because you can just show up authentically and people get a taste of your energy and they're like, oh, I feel you and I want to be around you. And it's so beautiful. Yeah, to see those connections. But yeah, I love that you also spoke to the power of understanding what's going on for you in this moment in time. So like, we can always look at your birth chart and that's such a powerful tool to understand who you are, what your challenges are, what your strengths are, what your purpose is. I mean, literally anything you want to know about yourself, you can find in the birth chart. But then when it gets really, where it gets really interesting, it's also looking at what we call transits and transits are where the planets are right now in the sky and how that's affecting and working with your birth chart. So we all go through these cycles. The planets are always moving in a cycle. You know, every year the sun gets all the way around the zodiac, your birthday, that's a solar return, right? And so when you start to track those cycles, you start to see and uncover the patterns that before were so nebulous and maybe even frustrating. And you realize you don't have to like 
break those cycles. It's impossible to, right? You just move through them with more intention and more purpose. So I love being able to help people, especially business owners, understand where they're at in that cycle, right? Because certain times of the year, you have way more energy in your business, for example, like if the sun is transiting through your 10th house, which is, you know, astrology jargon. Don't worry if you don't understand that. But there are places in your chart that have to do with your your career or your relationships or your creativity or even your spirituality. And those times of year, it's important to know are getting activated so that you can really lean in and, you know, make the progress that you want to. All of that is so freeing too, because so many people expect to have a consistent energy or not necessarily expect it, but beat themselves up when they, I'm not feeling as energized by my business right now. And to hear that that's all part of your chart and all those things is really special and important. And I, I'm i curious from you, since you straddle all these worlds, what's your experience been like going into these corporate environments and working with teams? I'm sure there are people who are super open to it and others who are skeptics like what's that been like oh it's it's wonderful it's so wonderful especially when I get a team that's in it you know like I did a corporate workshop for a retreat recently and every they were like yeah we love astrology and it was so amazing to see the connections that took place because what I did was I led everybody through that guided visualization and then helped and then I looked at their birth charts and said oh this is your communication style so that's also what I specialize in is being able to understand what your communication style is based on your birth chart which is you know obviously helpful for these corporate settings And it was just so cool to see the connections and to see people look at each other in a new way and just be able to like have these realizations. And that validation is so key as well, because it just creates this sense of belonging and the sense of like, you don't have to be like the same as anybody else in this group. And I think people often get stuck in comparison. So having somebody validate you and your gifts and your, you know, your strengths is so, is so cool to, to see happen. And so I'm really, as I'm doing more of these corporate events, really being so intentional about the teams that I work with, because I am not interested in convincing people that astrology is real. I, you know, jazz 10 years ago would have been like, yeah, let me, let me explain it to you. You're going to get it. But it's so, it's just a waste of time because those people are committed to misunderstanding you, to put it simply. Like they feel like they know they have so much bias. Astrology can be such an activating word for some people. And they'll look at you like you're a a witch, you know, like we've talked about when you like the witch wound and like, I don't want to be, I've been so disrespected by people, especially men who will look at me and like, like I'm, you know, not human because I believe these things. But luckily, I do have people in my family and in my circles who are more skeptic, skeptical. And so I have found ways to talk about astrology. And really, I find the more that I just live my astrology and live my spiritual practice and do what I love, people are more interested and more curious. The second I try and start convincing somebody, it's like they just glaze over and they're like, oh, I'm in defense mode. Um, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And something happened recently. I was in this workshop with with this wonderful woman who I who I respect. She's a, she's an author and everything. And she was talking about communication. And I was like, oh, this is this is my people. This is a corporate setting. It's run by this woman. I'm I'm in it. But she was like with this, with this guy that they were like demonstrating strategies and stuff. And they pulled up a slide that said, what are the top five personality tests? There's like the study that like compared all these personality tests. And on there was like Myers-Briggs and like the big five and other things that I, I hadn't heard of before. And it was like this graph that was showing how effective they are in, I think it said, predicting life outcomes. And at the very bottom was astrology. And astrology was at 0%, 0% effective. 
And right next to it was this tweet that was seemingly trying to summarize these results and said, you know, okay, so basically this one is the best, Myers-Briggs is okay, and astrology is useless. And I was like, I'm sorry, So why'd she hire you? Yeah, that's so yeah. weird. So, so I was more of just like an attendee. So mm. <laughs> just yeah. feels mean. No, it was so mean, but that's the, that's the tone. in a yeah. lot of these, a lot of, even like run by a woman, you know, like this is the tone that astrology is useless, that it's pointless, that it's, you know, fake. And I just, I really want people to understand that it's beyond sun signs, right? Cause so many people are like, oh, well, you're telling me that I'm like a 12th of the population. And I'm like, no, I'm telling you that you are the most unique thing in the entire universe. Nobody has your birth chart. Nobody ever will again. Right. So it's like, when we look at the birth chart, we are looking at your own universe. It's not a personality test. It's not a, you know, cut and dry cookie cutter situation. This is like going way beyond. And Side note, Myers-Briggs was developed based on astrology. So it's like these things that people think are so unrelated. It's like when you just trace it back to the wisdom, you know, it's like, oh, it's often comes from these really ancient lineages that somehow we've just decided are useless. So (laughs) I could, yeah, I could keep going about that, but that's kind of been my experience. It makes me sad because it's, So it just makes me think, what are you afraid of? My whole life is about being open to what could this be for me? It might not be for me, but at least being open to I'm getting a free workshop at work about this thing. Let's see what it reveals about me. But I'm also a junkie to self-mastery, you know, getting to know myself. So I don't these I'm triggered. It just reminds me of being back in those environments where everybody is so smart about being book smart and yes. doesn't care about relationships and different ways of experiencing the world that can't be proven by, you know, science or whatever it is when it is it is ancient. And there's so much denial of ancient wisdom. It's crazy even like eastern western medicine, all of that that yeah. I just I can't get behind. Yeah. And it's like, you know, yoga, for instance, people have been extracting over the, you know, for centuries. And it's only now that the expert podcasters, Andrew Huberman, whatever, will be like, oh, I've developed this protocol that's called, you know, this thing. And it's like, oh, do you mean yoga nidra? <laughs> And, and like, and then they will talk about yoga with this really condescending tone. Like they didn't just extract it. Right. So I think the more, but things like yoga, you, there is more research and there is more measures that you can find. But once we get into these more spiritual wisdoms, like we have to be able to set aside that incessant need for proof. Because it it is beyond, it, you know, it's beyond what we can measure as humans, right? We have to have room for things that are energy, right? That just are. And I think more people, I think more people are open for the most part. And those are the people that I'm, that I'm aligning with and that I want to work with. And I think it is possible. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because there are a few gurus that I was into and then abandoned once I realized they're basically lifting not necessarily plagiarizing because we all absorb the things that we read and learn and can push them out again and not realize that this was almost exactly parroted from this super ancient thing. So I've been going back in my readings and reading old, old stuff that they, not necessarily these people, but others will reference. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, that other guru who doesn't reference any other books in their works was totally repeating this thing from the 1920s or the AD 100. (laughs) And I'm reading that now. And I know this is where you're getting this philosophy and trying to make it your own. And I wish that you would just throw them a bone once in a while to be like, this is where I learned what I did versus pretending that you came up with it yourself, like the yoga nidra situation. You didn't, you can mention yoga nidra and that you made some tweaks to make it work for you. 
but to not recognize that this is where it comes from. I wonder what that's about, you know? Yeah. And there's so much of that where even these men, I talk about it all the time. All men are manifestors. If you read their books about how they made all their money and everything, they just say it differently. They use their charts differently. If they've had them read, like they're bringing out those parts of them and whether they choose to recognize it or not, there's a whole bunch of magic going on and a whole bunch of cosmos and energy and mysticism that they attribute to other sources and that's okay yeah but I would like for them once in a while and I I see it in their biographies and stuff they'll mention maybe twice in the whole book you know I believe in God or you know I prayed for this or I felt it men are very they say I felt it in my gut and they go Mm. with their gut even when they don't know that they need to believe it or why and I respect that a lot I just wish that they would tune into it a little bit more and investigate, you know, where does that gut stuff come from and how can I get to know myself even better? So I really know when that's speaking to me and to trust it. So I'd love to see more men in your fold who are open. Definitely. And I have found that, you know, and I think, I think there are more men that are turning to it and that are open and that even like they'll say things about a sign or like something that was like a synchronicity and they're like, I don't know, but like, that's pretty cool. And I'm like, yeah, it is pretty cool. Like, it's cool to look around you and see how things can align. And, you know, even if they want to frame it as like further performance, you know, that's often the word that they'll use instead of like self-help, right? Like for a minute, it's like always around how can I be the best? But I think for men and for literally for all of us, Getting away from that guru mentality is huge. I think anybody that puts themselves on as a guru or they try and act like, you know, they have all the answers, it's just, it's not authentic. And I think I'm reminded of Glennon Doyle, who I love, will say, I only trust leaders who remind me to trust myself, right? I'm only going to trust spiritual wisdom that brings me home and shows me that I'm my own teacher. I'm my own guru. And I, I think that is what we're seeing more and more, but there are still leaders. So I think it's so important to, for us to be in a discernment so that we can really sense and trust our intuition about where people are coming from and their intentions and to recognize if they're trusting or if they're recognizing their own privilege too. I think As soon as we start talking about spirituality, it's so important to also bring in the conversation of of privilege and power and recognizing the the platforms that we have and to make sure that we're uplifting people in the margins. I often see a lot of times in spiritual circles kind of a purity culture or, you know, even like transphobia and things. Like I think we have to be really diligent to to be open. And and that's where the yes. And comes back into play of like, yes, we can be spiritual. Yes. We can absorb all these ancient practices. And we also need to be so aware of how we show up in the world and how we can support society and humanity. Yeah. Big snaps to that. Cause they're the ones who started it all. So yeah, literally. (laughs) Exactly. Jazz, we have some rapid fire questions that we ask everybody they are as rapid as you want them to be your definition of rapid and we have i think six i'm going to start ticking through them now and we'll learn even more about your business because they're my favorite questions that we ask what are you proudest of in your business right now i think i'm proudest of just taking big new scary steps starting the podcast is huge. I mean, as you two know, having such an amazing podcast, like it's a lot of work and I'm trying to figure it all out and it feels really vulnerable and scary, but I'm really proud of myself for taking that step. I think for a long time, I was like, well, certainly not me, you know, I can have a business called Astrology Speaks, but, (laughs) but podcasting just seems so scary, but yeah, I, I'm going to be starting a podcast and the name that I've landed on is The Vault Within. So I'm really excited to have it be kind of the safekeeping for these conversations of spirituality and astrology. And my sister's a therapist, so I'm going to be bringing her on a lot. 
hopefully. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm I'm just really proud that I'm doing the courageous thing. <laughs> and it's taken you a whole lifetime to get here, you know, even just using your voice in that way as a Scorpio rising is huge because you're saying I have so much that I want to share and I want to share it for free and give it to you and just from our experience, I can speak to how I was like right before we launched, I had a little freak out because I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I want everybody to know this depth of the real me. And I hadn't, that was not in the forefront of my brain until a week or two before we launched. And I had this freak out of like, what if my grandma listens? <laughs> not that she would and not like, what do I care if she's judging me? Right. I'm not saying anything that crazy except dropping some F bombs once in a while. So that was an interesting, you'll, you'll get to know yourself in that period too, in ways that you didn't expect if you're anything like me when right before we launched, but yeah, I, I love that for you. Tell us about a book you read or a podcast you listened to recently that changed the way you're thinking about your life or your business. I recently read a book called the art of gathering by Priya Parker. And it has completely shifted the way that I facilitate circles and also just like get together with friends. So her whole thing is like being so aware of the purpose and the intention behind your gathering. And it doesn't matter if it's a birthday party or a casual hangout or a wedding. Like, you know, there's any time you're bringing people together. It's so important to be aware of the purpose. And also t something that I have taken away is how cool and fun it is to have a prompt. So whether that's kind of priming people, like for example, the, the events that I do lately, I've been doing a lot with like the planets. So I'll have a whole circle or a whole event around, you know, Venus. And I walk you through how to understand Venus in your chart. But before the gathering, I'm reaching out to people and saying, look up your birth chart, look up Venus. And also bring something that's meaningful to you to put on the altar. So I think just priming people for circles or events is so helpful. But even like a bird, like I had a birthday party for some friends recently and they're both Pisces. And so I was like, let's talk about our feelings at this party. Like we're going to have a conversation. Everybody pick an emotion and bring a story about a time you felt that way. So it's like, for people like me and people who have these Scorpio placements that get really stuck when you're like, oh, tell me something. And we're like, oh, I haven't had time to go deep and think about that. It can be really helpful because those people can think about it first, come prepared and know that they're going to have space to be deeply heard and that there won't be interruption. It'll be like you have the floor and it can feel a little awkward at first, but yes, definitely check out that book. It's really good. Yeah, I write it. I wrote it down and I get all the books that people recommend. And then I would say 20% of the time I remember who recommended it. And so then I'm like, <laughs> thank you to whoever recommended it. Just it feels like a little magic present that shows up at the library for me. I'm like, oh my gosh, yay. I don't remember when I put a hold on this. And I got a two today of I I remembered where they came from this time. But I love when it's like, oh, where did this come from? And why did <laughs> yeah. I order it? Or like our guest a couple weeks ago it, it recommended a book. I got it from the library immediately and read it, finished it before she did. And she said, wait, you already finished this? <laughs> and the episode hadn't even come out. When you're such an inspiration when it comes to reading, you just fly through books and I'm like, I want to be like that. It's so cool. It's not always a, a good thing to be. You know, we all have our skills and, you know, sometimes like two, I'm reading, thank you for saying that. And there's two that I'm reading right now that have taken me a really long time because I'm really absorbing them. So I, I have to be careful with myself of, like you said, what's my goal here? I don't want to just read for speed. And I have done that before. And I want to make sure that, you know, I'm really taking the time that this thing deserves. And some books are just faster reads and I'm, a very practiced reader. So I have to recognize that too. It's like all these dualities that exist at the same time. So thank you for saying that. And it's something that I'm working on being intentional about. It, am I absorbing what I need to absorb from this at the pace that I'm absorbing it? If that yeah. makes sense. 
but yeah, I like to, I like to read. I like to get it done. What would your last meal be? So breakfast for me is so sacred. I feel like I would have just like a really big breakfast spread with like delicious eggs, you know, with like delicious vegetables, mushrooms, onions, peppers, cheese, and a stack of waffles with like tons of maple syrup on them. <laughs> and like, just like one last cup of coffee. Like, I don't know. I, I was thinking about this question and that's feels the most right. <laughs> Waffles are superior. This is the hot take. And I don't think many people disagree with me. Waffles are it's superior true. to pancakes. Made way better than pan- pancakes. Oh, hands down. With the nice crispy edge around the pancake. Yes. Amazing. But waffles will always win because of the pockets. And if you get the perfect pocket, I'm drooling in my mouth. With mm-hmm. the butter and the and the maple syrup, like the quantity is when it's the perfect bite you cannot beat that with the edge of a pancake because it's just too mushy in the middle it like exactly. will never compare Exa- no exactly Agreed. so <laughs> agree does <Yes. laughs> waffle pockets man okay what's the best business purchase you've made in the last six months under a hundred dollars so i recently found a device that i use in my business and in my coaching but i think anybody would benefit from it It's called a sing ring. So I'm going to show it. So people, Mm. it's like basically like a little metal straw with this like circle that you helps you hold it. So there's a vocal technique called semi-occluded vocal tract voicing therapy. And if you ever want to improve the quality of your voice, this is something to consider. So basically you just like breathe and voice into this thing (laughs) and the back pressure helps to align your vocal cords in such a way that improves the, decreases the tension, improves the quality. So for years, I was using a straw into like blowing bubbles through a straw into water. That works great too. You can do that. But this little device, $50 and yeah, it's, uh, it's really helpful. So I was doing this before we got on it just helps to yeah improve your voice that might be something as far as embodiment emily you might want for a speaking career that's cool yeah yes no it's wonderful and it's like you you know you can make a whole ritual around it so i'll like often guide people in like a little breath work a little like calming the nervous system connecting within and then starting with that and then there's like other things you can do. You can do like vocal glides. So like you would you would um, voice into it like, ooh, and that really can help just make it more clear. And yeah, just like stronger. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a former singer as well. So that was- Oh, cool. Yes. And that's that's really what this was, I think, made for the sing ring is for singers. But yeah, it's for literally anybody. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And I love that you had an answer and that you've researched these things and listened to be like, I have something. I, I, I'm not just thinking about it, which is fine either way, but I'm impressed, you know? Hence like, the, yeah, going back to the Scorpio this. rising, I, I will do nothing casually. <laughs> That's so awesome. What is lighting you up lately? I think uh, the circles that I do. I did one for the Taurus New Moon on Sunday. And I work with this woman named Maya who has a business like a skincare business called Wellness by Willow. And we'll partner and I'll do I'll talk about the astrology and I'll guide the visualization and help and look at people's charts. And then she'll like lead a facial massage. So it's just such a beautiful way to like bring in the embodiment piece. And yeah, I just love seeing people in person. I just, it just lights me up to see not only the people that come and get a lot out of it, but the connection between people. Yeah. Yeah. And you are so, for everyone here, I love bringing people on who we've met and worked with before because that's why I got so pestery. I'm like, Jazz is so talented. (laughs) Even in that first, like at the event, small 10 minute reading I could feel how embodied you are in your work and that might be because of you know the uh, I'm this isn't the right terminology but the eastern and western worlds the grounded and 
you know, mystical worlds that you embody simultaneously. But I could just feel that from you immediately. And then when I it, it have been in your energy for these things and reading your emails, it's just like this, this chick, like she gets it on so many different levels and takes it where it needs to go versus like, we're going to get on this Zoom and talk about your chart. And now I'm going to have you use it and with other women and in a place where you can just feel so safe and and held. That's why I'm like, okay, my networking era is like, when is jazz coming up north next? <laughs> I'm not going to West Seattle, but I I might. I don't want to rule it out. Oh, well, that's good to hear. And this actually feels like a little bit of a sign for me because I am thinking about, I will be moving later this year and I'm looking at places. So yeah, maybe, maybe venturing north a little bit. We'll see. It could be like me where I just moved to Seattle and then I just kept mostly going north until Inching I up. stopped for now. But yeah, I started in what they call Tangletown, Greenwood, Green Lake, Wallingford. And then made a little detour over to the top of Queen Anne, as every 20-something does. They do Queen Anne, Ballard, or Fremont, you know, like Capitol Mm -hmm. Hill. We all lived in that, like, cool neighborhood. And then by Northgate, now Edmonds, I just stay here. And you got to figure out where your signs want you to be, too, because being by the water is very healthy for my Pisces husband. Yeah. Yes, I'm a Pisces moon, so I love that's definitely where I'm that's like my top priority is being close to the water so yeah your your Edmonds fangirling has really inspired me to to maybe head up that way yes I love that I just come to me I like was just telling my (laughs) husband this morning I'll think something in my head like Edmonds needs this and then it it pops up like we have a Medispa now that I'm obsessed with and just was touring last week or I had thought we need a sushi restaurant and then the sushi restaurant came. I'm like, okay, what do I need to manifest next for Edmund so that no, I can leave? It's amazing. The last question, what's one life experience everyone should have? This is one we stole from Rain Wilson. Shout out. I love this question. So, uh, yeah, of course I've thought of it. <laughs> I really feel like everybody should get a psychic reading at some point especially with Amanda Gale, who I think you've had on the podcast. Mm -hmm. She's a local psychic and medium. It is just so deeply validating to hear that you have not only have spirits around you all the time, but that they love you and they're supporting you and guiding you. And, And it's like, they'll give you, you know, these sorts of experiences will offer you insight into like what's going on and maybe like where to put your energy and you know like advice but it's really just that spiritual connection and validation it's really just been life-changing for me and so I've had to kind of and maybe this is the Scorpio in me too like loving like all of that I need to have boundaries with it because I'll be like just yeah help me communicate all the time but no I think it's just like such a beautiful thing to to try out and to really align you with spirit world so that you can yeah like just be your best be your best self oh what's so funny about that too is emily's a psychic junkie like we both have our people but yeah even for me i'm like i have to be really it's careful like just one yeah to not do too many yes, no, it yes, so. your own <laughs> intuition. and i don't really have that problem like i always want to have a reading but i don't because i don't want to spend the money on it quite honestly mine doesn't mine doesn't muddy my intuition it's just like oh i already knew that oh i mean okay i already knew that and i've even that. had some repeat people be like my most recent one that i really really trust and love daniela she's like babe talk to me in six months you do not need like you're good you know this I'm like okay yeah okay yeah they're frustratingly validating when you're like I want to hear something like explosive (laughs) and then Mm -hmm. it's like oh this is just the same shit I've been journaling every day and like in a much more powerful beautiful way like it's necessary because sometimes you need to hear it from the outside but I'll get irritated when I'm like I like you know, I already knew this, like Emily said, but I still want it. I need it. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, Amanda, 
Gail, the first reading we had, she told me that my spirit, she's like, I'm seeing like a microphone on a desk, like something like that. And this was like, even before I had the intention of starting a podcast. And she's like, just know that like, when you get to that point, like there's already a spirit there, like there's already an angel there, like ready to support you in that. And like, how cool, how validating. And that really helps like yeah. in my mind that possibility, right? So it's like something I already could have tapped into, but just like hearing that was just so deeply validating and still is. So mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, it's so good. Okay, Jazz, where can everyone find you? Give us all your links so that yes. they can book you. Yeah, so my website is astrologyspeaksbyjazz.com. And there you can find, you know, contact forms and my coaching page and yeah, everything and signing up for my email list. You can find that there too, but I'm most active on Instagram. My Instagram is astrology.speaks and I'll post, you know, content around, yeah, the, the transits as well as, you know, communication tips, embodiment practices, things like that. And I'm always doing events around Seattle. So I do a lot of, yeah, events around the full moon or new moon, or like I was saying around like parts of your birth chart. And I'm always excited to meet new people. So yeah, hope to connect soon with you. Amazing. I can't believe I wasn't following you, but I do now. Yeah. Okay, good. (laughs) Sign up for her newsletter though. It's like seriously from somebody who's picky about newsletters. It's just such a nice read like get a warm cup of something settle in and just read jazz's insights there's one that you did like a comparison to cardi b and something i was like hell yes it was like pretty soon after i had been subscribed where i was like this is the shit that i need in my inbox like tell me how the planets and cardi b like what they have in common (laughs) exactly and that's the thing too it's like i can go so deep into the 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 emotional part and the spiritual part, but also like existing in the world with pop culture. Like it's so cool to have astrology there to take you deeper into, yeah, connecting and, and really feeling into these things. So cool. I'm glad you love it. And it means, oh, it always means so much to hear from you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your time, your gifts, all of it with us. And we'll see you next week on the coast. 